Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So come, with the wise men and the shepherds, let us come and go to Bethlehem. Come, let us adore him. Christ be with you. Welcome to this service of worship of carols and pageant coming to you this evening from here, the sanctuary of St. Andrew's Church, Ottawa, as well as the homes of our members. From all of us to all of you, Merry Christmas. Come, let us worship. Please pray with me. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, we come together tonight from our homes set with the twinkling glow of the Christmas tree lights, opening our hearts to receive once more the gift of the Christ child, born for us this day. Everlasting Father, we praise you for this child, your own son, who has come to bring peace and goodwill to all people. In him, your love shines in the darkness, and in this season of great joy, we praise you for the gift of hope that can heal the wounded soul and for your call to us to be part of the gift you give this Christmas, giving, loving, and serving others. As we do come together to do this, we join with the angels and saints to rejoice and sing. 
We come this evening to listen to the joyful story of Jesus' birth. It is in your manger we come tonight, Lord. We're gazing on you in your smallness, your vulnerability in coming to us like this. Our hearts are stirred by your love and infinite goodness. Truly, your love stretches beyond our understanding, and we give you thanks and praise that you have come among us, that you are here. As your light shines from the manger, we do confess and remember those times we have forgotten your love and the times when we have preferred darkness to light. We know only too well how easily we have been distracted from your plans by our own. And yet, here we are now, kneeling before you with the shepherds and the wise men, ordinary people made extraordinary by your love. Forgive us as we pray and grant us the peace that comes in your name. Let your light shine in our lives and may the good news we hear this night continue to illuminate our living in the years to come. We pray now together the prayer that you teach us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, this is the good news that God looks on us with steadfast love and mercy. Coming to us as a small child, God brings us the greatest of all gifts, God's own eternal love entrusted to our keeping. As we bend low over the manger to hear his soft cries, to feel his small hand grasp our finger, we imagine picking him up, holding him close, inclining our whole self to him. This is the gift that he enters the world and indeed our own hearts with a vulnerability that invites our hearts to burst open and receive him as well. Out of the riches of his glory, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Then you being rooted and grounded in love will have power together with all the saints to comprehend the length and the width and height and depth of the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do so much more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. In the beginning, there was nothing, no up or down, no near or far, no yesterday or tomorrow, only God here and now. Then came the idea. The idea came from God and was part of God, yet it seemed to have a dream of its own. From that idea, all things came to be, light and darkness, time and space, energy and matter, everything needed to make a universe. God gathered it all together and set to work. Out of swirling gas clouds, fiery stars ignited with a whoosh. Planets and moons spun together, and the galaxies danced like snowflakes on a winter night. God was in and through it all, 
and it was all good. The idea kept growing. One the edge of one galaxy, a sun, whirling around the sun, a planet, small, lifeless, covered in dark waters. Then the breath of God came like a breeze and ruffled the surface. Something wonderful happened, deep in the seas, where there was life, simple at first, but then more complex. New forms of life came. They filled the seas, they walked on the land, they flew in the air, flowers bloomed and insects buzzed. The little world teemed with life and color, scent and sound. Then God made another kind creature. This one was a bit different from the others. It could love, laugh, delight in beauty, think, imagine, wonder, choose, maybe even have ideas of its own. It was a risk. What would these creatures do? What would they become? Which way would they choose? Would they fall in love with the world? Would they learn to see God in it and in each other or not? The idea kept moving. It fluttered around the world, creating, inspiring, enlightening, awakening. It was in every place and time. But in one place and in one time, it came to rest. Not in a great city like Rome or Jerusalem, but in a tiny village called Nazareth. Mary was making bread when the strange visitor appeared. One moment she was kneading dough and daydreaming about her upcoming wedding to Joseph. The next moment she was shocked to find she was no longer alone. Greetings, Mary. Don't be afraid. God is with you. You are going to have a baby. You will name him Jesus, and he will have very special work to do. Mary could hardly think straight. A baby? How? When? Why me? What will the neighbors think? What will Joseph say? But all she could blurt out was, how can this be? I'm not even married yet. The God that, who breathes life into all things will breathe this new life into you. Although Mary was still afraid, and although she could not yet see how, she chose to trust that God was at work, doing something special through her and through the child who was coming.
Meanwhile, Joseph was anxious and upset. He did not know what to do. He wanted to trust Mary, but her story was so far-fetched. A mysterious visitor? A baby before the wedding? Imagine the gossip! But what if he refused to marry her? What would happen to Mary then? One night, after tossing and turning for hours, he dreamed that a messenger from God came to him. Joseph, don't be afraid. You can trust Mary. It is God who has breathed this new life into her. She will have a son. He will call him Jesus, which means the one who sees. After that, Joseph slept soundly. When Joseph got up in the morning, and told Mary about the dream, she was so happy that she cried. But another piece of news brought tears of a different sort. The Emperor of Rome wanted to count the people in his empire, so he would know how much money he could collect in taxes. Mary and Joseph were both worried. The baby would come soon. But there was nothing they could do. They had to go. Late one night, after a long journey on foot and by donkey, Mary and Joseph reached Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread, but they had neither. Hungry and tired, they searched for a place to stay, but only found a cave where animals were kept. Mary was scared. This was not what she had expected. She imagined that her baby would be born at home with family around him, but home was far away. Joseph was scared too. He had no idea how to help Mary. When some woman showed up with a lamp and water and clean clothes, they had heard there was a baby on the way. Joseph nearly cried with relief. After many hours, the baby was born. 
Mary cuddled him and rested. Then shepherds came, breathless from running, words stumbling out of their mouths. Good news. The sky is alight with angels singing a savior. Then the shepherds hurried away to tell others what they had seen and heard. But what had they seen? A newborn baby? An infant king? A savior? A light in the darkness? God's great idea in the flesh? Outside the night was dark and cold and the world was full of troubles. But inside the cave there was warmth and light and love. Mary nursed her baby and breathed in the smell of him. All the memories she had kept in her heart tucked away like treasures in a box to look at and wonder about later. For now, she simply wanted to be with Jesus. Whatever wonders had taken place that night for Mary, the miracle of this tiny leg was the best of all.
Life goes on. Mary and Joseph had to leave the warmth and safety of the cave and go out into the world. As custom demanded, they brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem because they wanted to say thank you to God for the gift of their child. To their surprise, someone was waiting for them. Simeon and Anna had been waiting for a long time, watching eagerly for the one God had promised to send. When Simeon saw Mary and Joseph with Jesus, somehow he knew, and his heart fluttered. He came close and held out his arms for the child. Now I can die in peace. God, you have kept your promise. With my own eyes, I have seen your salvation, your light which shall shine on all people. Mary did not understand, but the words sounded beautiful. But then Simeon added, Some will not welcome this child. When he grows up, many will speak against him. This will break your heart. Mary shivered. A shadow had fallen over her. How could anyone not love her beautiful child? Anna rushed over then and her beaming face was like the sun, driving away the clouds. What did Anna say to Mary? Who knows? Maybe she urged her not to worry about the, about the future, but to enjoy the present moment. Maybe she told her that life is a messy mixture of joy and sadness, beginnings and endings, but God is there through all of it. God is in all things for those who know how to look. Oh uh -huh.
Simon and Anna caught a glimpse of who Jesus was and what he will do, but there was more, there was always more. Far from Jerusalem, high in the eastern mountains of Persia, strangers were watching the skies. One night they saw a new star, at least it looked like a star, but it did not like, act like one. Instead of staying in one place, it went its own way, wandering like a planet. It was not on any of their star cards. What is it, they wondered. What does it mean? A star like that must tell of something important. Like the birth of some good person, they decided to follow it. The Magi followed that star all the way to Jerusalem. At home, they were used to dealing with kings and important people. So they went first to the palace of King Herod. They told Herod about the star they had seen and asked if he knew anything about the birth of a new king. Herod's eye narrowed. A new king? Fear took hold of him. Fear of losing power. Go and find this king, he said. And when you do, be sure to come back and tell me so I can go and bow down to him. But the Magi were wise enough not to trust her up. The star led them to Bethlehem. When they found Jesus, they were overjoyed. They gave him the gift they had brought with them. Gold because it does not tarnish, and a true king values things that last. Frankincense for prayer because a true king seeks wisdom through being still and listening for God. Mirror because it used for healing and to anoint the dead. And a true king seeks to heal rather than harm. And a true king knows that death will come before new life. And they had given their gifts. The Magi went home by a different way. When they did not return, Herod flew into a rage. No one could call him. All he wanted was to find and destroy Jesus. As selfish leaders always have, he caused great harm to innocent people. But in the end, he died, alone and afraid, unable to see God in Jesus or in anyone else. On their way home, the Magi talked about the star, how it caught them by surprise, roaming freely around the world, how it scattered its gift, or light far and wide, how it broke open a story about one people and then a story for all people, maybe even for all creatures and the earth itself. And so we return to the beginning. The idea that came from God was part of God, yet had a life of its own. Over the years, this idea took many shapes. It became a universe, a world, creatures infinite and wonderful, people in all their variety, a child called Jesus. This child grew up and showed us how to look for God in all things, in the birds of the air, in seeds and plants, in yeast and trees, in one other, another, our neighbors, ourselves, uh, no, our enemies, ourselves, in whatever calls forth awe, respect, reverence, wonder. The Christ child is a sign for us, a sign that God is with us. Pour it out in space and time, leave in leaf and stone, in soil and air and water, in flesh and blood. The Christ child invited us to see God's body, not just in one place and one time, but in all places and all time. In the earth and its creatures and its people. And in seeing to fall in love with the world, to open our hearts to it, to cherish and protect it. Simeon was right. Some did not welcome Jesus. Many spoke against him, and Mary's heart was broken. 
it still happens. There are still fearful Herods who seek to destroy the Christ child. There are still those with power who will do anything to keep from losing it. But the idea is still here, fluttering around the world, creating, inspiring, enlightening. As long as there are people who can imagine and dream and act, there is hope that a new world may come to be. So come, share your light, bring your stars, become who you're, you're meant to to be beloved child of God, part of the wonderful and flooring of God's great idea. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, for unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus, Jesus has arrived in grace and mystery, renewing faded hopes, announcing peace to a weary world. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Jesus comes amongst us in power and glory, inspiring joy, and calling us to live lives that are full of God's love. Jesus, the light of the world, is born. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our lives. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our world. God is with us. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, as we celebrate this Christmas, Transform our hearts and our lives so that your good news is not an old story, but a fresh truth lived out every day through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we light the candle in the sanctuary, I invite you to light the candle in your home. And as we enjoy the light it offers, Carolyn is going to lead us in our closing prayer. How great is God's love that we should be called children of God as we enjoy the light of the Christ King. Please pray with me. As you get ready to do that, you can reach your hands up high, touch your nose, touch your toes, give your hands a clap, and put them in your lap as we close our eyes and talk to God. Thank you, God, for the precious gift of your Son, Jesus. Tonight, we have come to the manger once more to remember the birth of our Savior. To pray that the light in Him will bring forth your light in us, so that we could, in what we do, might be part of your great idea, part of your plan for salvation, bringing the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love into this world. Our prayers this night are for this world that you love so much that you came to dwell with us, Jesus. We pray for those like Mary and Joseph, all who wandered the roads and highways of this world, seeking a place to call home for themselves and for those they love. We remember before you people who are hungry and hurting bringing them to safety and bless them with welcome this night. Show them your love. We pray for those like the shepherds who are charged with caring for others. We remember essential care workers and those who look after people who are sick and unwell. Encourage them and let your light shine upon them, bringing to them the gifts of peace they offer others. As we remember the Magi, travelers from afar, we remember the nations of the world. We pray for our leaders here in our city and province and country and, and all those whose decisions and affect 
the lives of others. Give them wisdom and place your vision on their hearts. God, on this night, as we remember the birth of your son, we rejoice in your love for us and remember before you those who we love and who love us. We pray for those who are far away and who are apart from this year, but who we can hold close in our heart. We remember those who have died this year. Tell them we miss them and love them and remember them until we are together once more. In silence now, we offer our own prayers. Thank you. Hearing our prayers in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, whose name means God with us, and in whom we rejoice this night. Amen. This is the light of Christ, kindled anew in our midst this evening as we hear again the story of his coming among us, the child in the manger. Take this light with you as you go, and as you do, may the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men, the peace of the Christ child, be yours now and forever. Amen. And a Merry Christmas to you all.
Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye.